Welcome to A Year in the Life of a 40-Year-Old Youth Pastor. My name is Adam, and today we're talking about part four of Leadership Essentials. This one is very simple, but very important. Not all great servants are leaders, but all great leaders are servants. Let me say it another way. You can be a great servant and not be a leader, but you cannot be a great leader without being a servant. See, one day Jesus and his disciples are walking down the road and, uh, and two of his guys, they say, hey Jesus, when you uh, are in charge of this whole deal, can you do us a favor? Like one of us wants to sit on your right hand and the other one wants to sit on your left. Is that cool with us? And Jesus is like, ah, you guys don't understand. You don't understand. See, it's just the way, I'm, the way my kingdom is gonna work and the way it works with me, it's different than the way the world works. The world, like you wanna be in charge, and like, ha ah, I'm the boss, I'm the, the ruler over you. It's different with mine. And here's what he says to them specifically. Matthew 20, 26. Not so with you instead. Whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant. In Mark chapter 10, when he's telling them the same story, he actually goes into more detail and he says this. Mark 10, 45. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. One of the very first foundational leadership principles that Jesus teaches his disciples is that if you're gonna be a leader in the kingdom of God, if you're gonna be a spiritual leader, then first, you must be a servant. First, you must be willing to do the lowly jobs. So the question is, are you willing to do the servant type jobs? Now, when I look at the great leaders of life, they're not necessarily doing all the servant jobs, but they are willing to do those servant jobs because because uh, there's two parts to this leadership essential. The first part is that you are a servant. The second part is that you are humble. And when you become a humble servant, that's the attitude and the action that's going to set you up as a foundation for being a great leader. Because it's not just being, it's not that you're just a servant, but you're also a humble servant. The humility is really the attitude part of it, that you have a servant's heart, and that's critical because if you're going to be a great leader, oftentimes the greatest leaders that I know, they're not doing all the servant-type jobs and all the servant-type roles. They're not the ones who are always cleaning the bathrooms in their buildings. However, they are willing to clean the bathrooms in their buildings if it is necessary, okay? A leader who is worth following is a leader who, who he, he is willing to pick up trash. He is willing to do the behind the scenes stuff. He's willing to do all that. If he's a great leader, he probably isn't doing all that, but he's got the heart and the willingness and the attitude that says, I will do that if I need to. But because of his leadership ability, he's able to lead at such a level where other people are working with him and serving him and they're doing that, but he's willing to do that. And, and maybe he starts doing that. Maybe he still does some of that. I believe if you're gonna be a great leader in the kingdom of God, first you need to learn to be a servant and you need to put that into action and be willing to serve whenever necessary. So my question for you is, are you willing to do the dirty work? Are you willing to do the lowly servant type jobs? The second key part of this is the attitude of humility. Jesus, uh, gives us another demonstration of this when he washes his disciples' feet. And, and you may have heard the story before, but one day Jesus is sitting, they're like having dinner with his disciples, and he, he goes and he grabs the stuff and he begins to wash his disciples' feet. And they're like, what are you doing, Jesus? Because in their in their day and age, in their culture, that was the job of a servant. And they're like, Jesus, you're not, you're like, we're supposed to be washing your feet. Why are you washing our feet? And, and, and I'm telling you, it, that was a gross job. It'd be gross in our uh, culture to wash somebody's feet. Feet are gross but it was way worse back in that culture because they didn't have paved roads, they didn't have cement, so everywhere they're, they, and they walked everywhere. So they're walking in sandals, their feet are dirty, covered in dirt, maybe covered in mud, covered in sweat, and on these roads, the, the same roads that the camels walked on. So probably when Jesus is washing these dudes' feet, it's full of dirt and maybe a little bit of camel poop. And so it was a dirty job and a gross job. And Jesus gets down and washes his disciples' feet, and then he tells them this. John 13, 14, Jesus says, Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. Jesus demonstrates to his disciples what it looks like and what it means to be a servant and to have a servant's attitude. A foot washer was a very humble and low position, and Jesus willingly put himself in that position to serve his disciples. He was their leader, but he also served them. He was their leader, but he also had a humble servant's heart. Humility is key if you're going to be a great leader, I think, whether it's in the church or in any uh, field in the world. 
Jesus makes it very clear to his disciples, be servants. But he also makes it clear to them, you are to be leaders. Jesus wants these guys to do both. He wants them to make disciples and lead lots of people to come to follow him. But, but the way he's going to do that, the way they're going to do that, is through the example that he set, is through serving people. This is crazy. And if, if you are going to be a, a leader who's worth your salt, you need to work on having a humble servant's attitude. You need to work on... Um, not thinking of yourself more highly than you ought to. And this can be a challenge for many leaders, especially if you're the type of person who ends up being on a stage or getting people, as soon as you begin to like be a little bit successful in leadership, people start to tell you things like, hey, you're doing a great job, or you're a great leader, or you're a great communicator, or you're blah, 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 blah. And, and you can start to like get an ego. You can start to get a big head. You can start to think, yeah, I am pretty awesome. But the truth is Jesus talks all over the Bible about the, the dangers of pride and the value of humility, about how God exalts the humble, but he opposes the proud. There's all these examples through scripture of people that had humility and how God valued that trait in leaders. Here's what's crazy. Uh, people who have studied leadership who are not church people have found this exact same thing to be true. There's a book I read recently called Ego is the enemy. And they found that ego and arrogance and thinking of yourself better than you are is actually uh, not an asset for being a great leader. Um, another one of the most famous leadership books of our day is called Good to Great, where they studied all these, these businesses that became great businesses. And one of the key factors they learned in that book, at each of these organizations that went from good to great, they had a leader who they called a level five leader. And the, one of the key characteristics of these level five leaders is they had this humble attitude about them. They didn't have arrogance. They didn't think they were better than other people. They Here's a quick thought on how to make this really practical. These, these uh, level five leaders in good to great said they were windows and mirrors, meaning when something went great in their business or their organization, they looked out the window and said, look at that team. Like they are awesome. They're the reason that this has happened. And when something went wrong or something went poorly, they would look in the mirror and think, what, what, where am I failing? What am I doing wrong as a leader? And so when things went good, they gave the credit to their team. When things went bad, they looked at themselves and said, how can I improve as a leader? There's a practical way that you can work on this concept of being a humble servant. It's no surprise to me that Jesus said, hey, if you're going to be great, what you got to do is be a servant. So though it may seem counterintuitive, they say that humility is actually something that is magnetic within a leader. One of the things that draws people to great leaders is their humility. Mother Teresa had this. Mother Teresa, she was a principal of a school. She had a, a good paying job and all this. Well, she leaves all that to go and serve the poorest of the poor. She goes to a humble servants type role and for years just serves the poorest of the poor. Well, through just, uh, leaving a, like a leadership role and, be, and going into a crazy humble servant's role, Mother Teresa began to get influence literally all over the world. Mother Teresa literally won the Nobel Peace Prize. She spoke to presidents. She was voted the most influential woman in the world multiple times because she like epitomized this trait of humility, this was, which was this magnetic thing that drew people to her and actually increased her influence in the lives of people, literally including presidents. Crazy stuff. Humility, though you may not think this is a great leadership trait, humility is a key critical trait if you're gonna be a great leader. I could go on and on and on, but I think you guys get it. Uh, I just want to challenge you to think about your own life. Think about your, your attitude. Think about your actions. Are you willing to do the servant type of roles? And how is your heart? Do you have a servant's attitude towards other people, towards the people that you serve, towards the people that are above you, that are below you, that are next to you? Are you just having this constant attitude of how can I serve, how can I serve, how can I serve? Um, are you having humility, like not thinking that you're better than people, not thinking that you're smarter than people, not thinking that you can't learn things from other people? Like the greatest leaders are always learning because they're humble and they're teachable. And so it, I would literally encourage you, pray that God would make you humble. Some people are like, don't pray, pray that that's dangerous because God will humble you. Well, hello, if this is a trait that God values, then we should pray for it and whatever it takes to humble us, we want God to humble us so that we can be the kind of people that he's gonna to use to make a difference in the world. So, in summary, you could be a great servant but not be a leader, but you cannot be a great leader and not be a servant. 
Don't think of yourself more highly than you ought. If you want to be great in God's kingdom, you must first learn, learn to be a servant of all. Leadership essential number four is being a humble servant. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you tomorrow.